As a math professor, I'm often asked, how should I study? How should I study most effectively? And there isn't one right answer to that question, but in this video, I'm going to share my system, the system that I recommend to my own students on how they should be studying. And I don't mean studying in terms of cramming for a test, I mean the daily routine of what you should be doing before, during, and after every single class. Now, a bad answer to the question of how should I study would just be saying study more or give this long laundry list of things that take a long time and involve a lot of effort. And it's true, we probably all could work a little bit harder at our learning, but in this video, I really want to focus on tips that don't take a lot of time but have a really big and outsized impact on your learning. So before we jump into the video, please do give it a like for the YouTube algorithm and we're going to see some tips for before class during class and after class. Now, before class is the spot where a lot of students actually don't do anything, but where it's the easiest to make a big impact. And I actually like to do two things before class on any given day. The first thing I do is what I call a five minute review. The point of this five minute review is to recollect what you learned in the previous class. And the point here is that when you go to a new class, you don't want to be wasting a lot of cognitive time during that class trying to dredge up from your memory or failing to dredge up things that you learned previously. You want that to all be fresh in your memory. And ideally, what you would do is your five minute review would be something that you could just do without even notes. You sort of pause and reflect, maybe close your eyes and think, what would we cover? Not every detail, but what was the big point? If it was a math class, for instance, perhaps this would be the major theorems or definitions of the previous class. This kind of recollection practice, sometimes called spaced retrieval, is actually really important for solidifying long-term memory. You want to practice pulling things that you learned recently back out of your memory into your current consciousness, and that process helps you remember it for the long term, more so than just this coming up class. The second thing that I like to do before class that can take a little bit longer, I'm sort of thinking 10 to 15 minutes, is something I call previewing as opposed to reviewing. The idea of previewing is to look forward to the content that you're going to be covering in that class. I usually use a textbook for this, and if the professor has told you well, what's going to be the topic of the next class and some sort of schedule, you can look it up and say, well, what are the major things that we're going to be learning in that class? What are the new concepts that we're going to have to wrestle with? Now, the goal here it's not for you to learn all the details, it's not for you to read all the exposition, that's what class is for, to be, have this introduction to the content. The goal with previewing is just to have a rough scaffold such that when you are in class, the knowledge that you're learning can be fit into this larger scaffold that you've previewed before class. And indeed, this type of previewing, much like the space retrieval I was talking about before, is very effective for developing long-term memories because what you're learning in class is going to be solidifying and slotting into the content that you just started to get a rough scaffold of before class. And then for more than just memory, one of the main reasons I love previewing so much is that it allows you to be more attentive during class, to understand a higher percentage of what is being talked about in class, for you to be more engaged because you've taken some of that foundational work and done it before class. And in fact, in my own classes as a professor, I do a flipped classroom style where students are required to do this previewing. For instance, I might assign a video that I've recorded for them to watch that sketches out some of the foundational concepts. And even if your professor hasn't done it, I always encourage you to do a little bit of preview before each class. And again, this is not meant to take a huge amount of time. This is just going to give you a little booster such that the time that you spend in class anyways will be even more effective. Okay, so next up, we're going to go to class. Now, this is what I used to look like when I was in class. And as you can see, it was a little bit of a mixture. Sometimes I'd be sleeping, sometimes I'd play on my devices, sometimes I would be chatting with other people, and that's okay, we're all human. But personally, I actually get a little frustrated with myself when I'm not paying attention in class because class is something I have to go to. I'm gonna be investing 30 to 40 hours per class, per semester, and. I want that time to be as effective as possible so I can have my leisure time, of course, but I want that outside of class where I can really, really enjoy it and not just fiddling away on my phone during class. And so that's why my first tip for being in class is just pretty broad. It's saying be an active participant. 
If the professor is telling you something, I want you to be thinking about it, to be reflecting on it, to do more than just to write down whatever the professor writes on the board. In fact, the worst mistake that a student can make in a class that is primarily didactic, in other words, a professor that's lecturing at you and then you're writing notes down, in that class style, the worst thing you can do is just become a stenographer, where all you're doing is just writing down whatever is put on the board without really understanding it. The goal is to understand it as much as you can. And if you're struggling with that, if you're going too fast, if you're forced into stenography because you can't keep up, then I would do more work pre-class, more of that previewing, more of the trying to build a scaffold until your during class is a little bit more effective. And be an active learner is thinking about what questions do you have about this? When you're taking notes, are you rewriting them in your words to reflect your own understanding? It's trying to answer the questions that are posed by the professor. If there's any collaboration opportunities between you and another student, it's to take those seriously. So just in general, be an active learner. Now I have two tricks that I like to try to do while I'm in class. One is I try to generate questions. And I don't mind if you don't want to go and ask your professors that, if you don't want to raise your hand and make it something for the entire class, that's okay. But I still would write down any questions or perhaps circle a spot with a question mark so that you know to think and reflect on that and perhaps get help with it later on. And when you're always trying to come up with questions, that is a good sign that you're actively engaged. And then the second thing I really like to do is I love to annotate my notes with little stars or circles or question marks. And this is just to give a signal to me that I'm going to look back on later after class of where was I completely confused in the notes? Or where was I mostly with the professor but knew I needed to double check something? I, I wasn't completely confident with myself. I come up with a little system of how I want to annotate notes like this and then I get to look at them after class and know what I was thinking during class because of my annotations. Now, after class is probably the trickiest because this is the one that has the most options. It's going to depend a bit on personal preferences. It's going to depend a bit on how the class is designed. But after class, you should be doing something. And I think the thing I like to do, even if there's nothing else, is a quick review of my notes. This is not like the review I was talking about before class, which is just saying, can I just recollect what we talked about just before I enter the classroom? This is saying, I'm going to go over my notes that I created in class, and I'm going to make sure I'm confident with everything. If I had a question that I came up with in class, I'm going to try to answer it or get help if I can't answer it. If there's something that was a little bit murky, I'm going to try to wrestle with it and figure out exactly what was going on. As in, you never want a class to happen and then to pass by you without you feeling like you 100% understood the content of the class. And so a post-class review, and it could take anywhere from 10 minutes if you're feeling pretty confident to maybe the whole class time again, it's really going to depend. But that kind of review means you're never falling behind because you're understanding the content of the previous class, which by the way, will make understanding the next class that much easier. I remember once as a graduate student, I had a course where the professor had a common class wiki and that you could edit it for bonus points. One of the things you could do was write up, type up using LaTeX, which is the way mathematicians write notes. And if you wrote up the notes, you could get some bonus points. And so I always wanted to do this, initially thinking I just wanted those bonus points, you know, give them to me. But what I was shocked by was that I had better recollection, better long-term recollection throughout the semester and even after of pretty much any course that I've ever had. The process of going to class, coming home, and then reframing what we talked about, writing out notes in my own words that explained the ideas that we talked about, and doing it within a couple hours of class just had tremendous benefits in terms of my retention. And I was finding I was barely having to study for that course. That is, the time I invested in going over the notes, and in this case actually typing them up in a way that was presentable to others, that that had a large payoff in time, even though it sounds like it would be a big time sink. I got that time back later when I didn't have to study or work nearly as hard for this particular course. I mentioned during class that I really like generating questions, and I like that for this stage as well. When you're going through the notes, I want to always come up with at least three different types of questions. And of those questions, I really like if one of those questions is a bigger picture question. 
question about how concepts relate to previous concepts, stepping out beyond the scope of the individual class, trying to see the forest as opposed to an individual tree. If you can ask those types of questions, you're really setting yourself up for having an immersive learning experience that's going to be excellent for long-term retention. Then the most perhaps important point of all of them, and it's still coming a little bit late in this video, but it is really the most important of them, is practice. Uh, as I say, I'm a mathematician, so I teach math courses. And in math, as in many other disciplines, it's just like juggling. You can listen to somebody tell you how to juggle for a while, and that's helpful, but you have to just do it. You have to practice. And the more practice you can do, the better. If there's anywhere where it's not trying to spend a short period of time, the other things I've talked about, I don't want you to spend a lot of time on them, but the practice I do want you to spend a lot of time on, as much as you can invest. Often professors give you opportunities for practice, they call it homework, but I would often go above and beyond that. For example, after going through the notes, I would just try to find a few suggested problems, perhaps from the textbook, and just try a couple to make sure, have I crystallized my knowledge and actually taken it from what the professor told me to something I can execute on my own? That's the role of practice, and it is absolutely crucial to fully and deeply understanding the concepts and being able to remember them for the long term. In fact, I have a whole video on how to do homework problems effectively. If you want to watch that, feel free to check it out. One of the things that I think is always important when you're trying to learn is to have appropriate indicators as to the effectiveness as you're learning, because we're actually not that good at judging how well we've learned something. And it's not until you get some problems and try to sink your teeth in that you really can demonstrate to yourself and on an exam to others that you really understand the concept. Now, my final piece of advice that you can do after class, and this one is just sort of a bonus, is called concept mapping. And I also have a video that's talked about this before. But the point of concept mapping is to write out all of the big connections between the major ideas of some particular subject. And you're probably not doing an entire concept map from scratch after every single class, but if you have a concept map or two or three that you're developing as classes go on, you can always come after class and say, can I add just one or two more connections to the concept map that I've drawn previously? And the more you do this kind of concept mapping, you get to see all the connections between the different topics, which is one of the hardest things to develop when you're learning material one isolated class at a time. It's the connections that are often lost. And so doing this kind of concept map is deliberately trying to spend time formed on the connections between all the different concepts. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like for the YouTube algorithm. If you have any questions or thoughts about your own studying, please leave them down in the comments below. And we're gonna get back to doing some math in the next video.